Yo, so I'm in Florida. There's a hurricane outside, but I haven't made a video in like two, two and a half weeks. So we're doing this anyways. Today, we're gonna learn how we can make this retractable sidebar with animations and interactions that you're seeing on the screen now. Obviously, you can take these same kind of tips and make any kind of retractable sidebar. We're gonna kind of speed through most of the actual layout stuff so we can get to the animation piece. And we're gonna do all of this with React, Tailwind CSS, and Frame Remotion. As always, all of the code for this is gonna be available in both JavaScript and TypeScript on my website. Link in the description. Let's get started. All right, so I've already got a little bit of code in here. Nothing too crazy. We can take a look really quick. As mentioned, I'm going to try to kind of get through the layout. I know I say that a lot, but I'm going to actually try to do it this time. I'm going to try to get the lay through the layout relatively quickly because I think most people are here to learn how to do the actual retractable animation piece, not how to do basic layout. But I want to make sure that I include this as well, just so you can get the same result as what I've got. As mentioned, I'm using React, Tailwind CSS, and TypeScript. Uh, or sorry, not in TypeScript, and Frame Remotion for our animations. I've already got all of those installed. The only other package that we're even gonna be using here is a package called React Icons, just to show some of the little icons and things that we have. That's just React-Icons. You'll see me import it here in a second, but let's go ahead and actually start looking at some of this layout and what I already have here. So up here at the top, just a wrapping div. We have a sidebar and some example content. I'm just laying this out with flex. I'm not using grid or anything fancy like that. Just for this example, I don't think it's really necessary. If we go down to my sidebar, this is just a position sticky so that I can scroll up and down. We'll see then that my example content has a height of 200 viewport height. We wanna just make sure that this always stays in the same place over here on the left. Shrink of zero, so this doesn't actually shrink with the flex. Height screen, top zero, you know, giving a little bit of border, stuff like that, nothing crazy. And then with our width, whenever this is open, we want it to be 225 pixels. If it's closed, we'll just set it to fit content. Obviously there's no button or anything yet to actually toggle that, but if I set this to false, we'll see that it goes all the way down to the smallest size. And that is gonna be the basis of, you know, our shrinking and growing. I'm gonna start by just making like a title section up here at the top. It's not gonna, you know, have a drop down or anything, but just something that kind of shows like maybe an account toggle type thing that you'll generally see on a dashboard like this. So right below my sidebar, I'm gonna create a new component, which I am going to call title section. That's just gonna take in whether or not it's open so that we can figure out whether or not we need to show some of the content in there. This can just return a div. The outer wrapping most div here is just gonna give this a little bit of space and a little bit of border on the bottom, padding on the bottom. Inside of that is essentially gonna be like a, a button wrapping div type thing. I'm not actually using a button here. I guess I'm using a div. Totally use a button as well. This is just giving it a display of flex, item center, justify between, a little bit of rounded on the edges, and then a hover state for whenever you hover over this. And inside of this, the first thing we need over here is kind of like a logo. This could also be like the, you know, the user's uh, kind of emoticon or like their picture or whatever. For mine, I'm just gonna use a placeholder logo. Pasting that in, mine is going to look something like this. The only thing that I really wanna note here, I'm just grabbing this as a basic SVG from logoipsum.com. You can do the same kind of thing. But I am gonna note that I have this wrapping div, which has a size of 10. So that's like a width and height of 40 pixels. And I wanna remember this because whenever this is on the small size, I want every one of my buttons to be the same size, right? So like up here at the top left, we're gonna have our logo and then we're gonna have a couple of different pictures going down the side. And then at the bottom, we're gonna have our button for opening and closing or like expanding. And I want to make sure all of those are the same size, right? So that they all kind of line up vertically and they, they look nice. They look nice when they're laid out, both open and closed. So I'm setting it to 10 here. And I wanna remember that whenever I have my icons for each of my tabs over here on the left, those are also going to have a size of 10. And realistically, that's the only thing I really care about here with my logo. So we can then go back up to my div and just drop that in. Make sure that we're actually adding our title section up here. And now we should at least see our logo with our border here and our hover state. And I did actually miss one of the little small piece. So around my logo, I want one more wrapping div here. This is just because I'm gonna have some content. You know, I guess you'll see as this comes together. I'm gonna have some additional content with like some copy and things in here. I guess I can just drop this in. And what I'm going to say is if I currently have toggled this to open, then I wanna show all of this content. So I wanna show my name and I wanna show this little pro plan tag. You can obviously steal the exact same stylings if you want, but if this is closed, I want that to go away. And I was just very confused, but one thing that I forgot is I, of course, now need to pass in this open flag so that we can get this to show up. There we go. I, I'm sure I edited this out, but I just spent like 45 seconds trying to figure out what I just did. Cool. So we'll now see that this shows up whenever this is open. And if I turn this back to false, we'll see that it goes away while the size of the sidebar goes down. Switch this back to true. And then finally, I just want like a little icon that's shown over here on the right. I'll just use a little bit of absolute positioning and dropping that directly in. This can go outside of my flex container right here. 
And this is going to use a React icon. Again, React icon like this. I'm using the FI Chevron down icon. Actually, my bad. I thought I was using a flip position for this. I guess I am using flex for this. So cool. This should be kind of our, our end state for this for now. Now, I already have a little bit of my spacing already set up between my title section here and where I will have all of my individual options, but I want my actual options to have some spacing between them as well. So inside of here, you know, we're going to have like our, our home route and our settings or, or whatever your different routes are. And between each of those on the Y axis, I want to add a little bit of additional margin. So I'm going to add a wrapping div here with a space Y of one. This just gives you know, 0.25 RAM or four pixels of space kind of between each of our elements. And from here, we can actually make our option component and our option component is going to look something like this. So it's going to need a handful of different props that's going to take in. So it's going to take in an icon from the uh, React icons package, the actual title of the link, whether or not it's selected a button to actually or a set state function to actually toggle whether or not it's selected open and this open prop is the same as kind of what we're seeing right here. So whether or not the sidebar is open and then a number of notifications to kind of show you would have seen that in the original example. So, you know, if there's three notifications or something to alert the user of, we're just showing that here as well. Now this can just return a simple button. That button is going to have a handful of different class names here. So position of relative, we are going to have a little bit of absolute positioning inside of this flex height of 10. Remember the kind of size 10 that I was showing earlier. So I want the height of each of these boxes to be 10. The width of 10 will come here in a second. You'll kind of see that. And then essentially we just have a couple of different hover states and things that we're showing whether or not this is selected. So if the selected title, it's actually going to be a string, not a Boolean that matches the title. If this actually is selected, then we want to show these classes as opposed to these classes. We can start by laying out the actual icon here. I'm just going to drop this inside of a div and that will return whatever icon is passed in. And this is kind of where our width of 10 comes in. So we have our width of 10 here, height full just to fill up that H10 right here, and then placing all the content in the center. And from this point, I think we can just drop in a bunch of options so we can actually see how this is starting to look. So back up here inside of my div, I'm just gonna drop in again, a whole bunch of these. Um, obviously add whatever you want, but each of these are just gonna have an icon, a title, and then our selected and set selected state, which we actually need to define really quick I'm going to default mine as dashboard, but right up here under open, just set selected and selected use state dashboard, passing those in, and then the same open prop. And now we should see that we of course need to remember to import all of our icons. So let me do that really quick. Here are all of the ones that I am using. And there we go. So now we have all of our individual options over here. We can lay out our text. So following a similar pattern to what we were doing a moment ago, if this happens to be open, then I want to show the title. If it's closed, obviously I don't want to show the title and just drop it in there like this. And we're going to do something similar with our notifications, right? So if notifications actually are passed in and it's open, then we actually want to show it. I'm passing in uh, my style tag for my transform here. Um, this actually isn't going to work like this. So I do need to, let me make one change. We actually want this to be a transform translate Y, just a normal Y. You'll see in a second here why I did that with my copy paste when we get to the frame or motion piece. But whenever we get to frame or motion, we're gonna need to directly pass this in in case we wanna do any other kind of transform animations. Uh, frame or motion will need to take all of your transforms in either in kind of the animation props or in the style prop here. So I'm just kind of getting ahead of that by passing it in directly. And now if we save that, we should see that that actually pops up here. So now we see, okay, we have three notifications on the sales tab. And that is all of our tabs. We can actually update this to change whenever we click on any of these. And to do that, we're just gonna come up to our button right here at the top and drop in an on click that's just gonna set selected to whatever the provided title is. Now, whenever we click on any of these, it will change. And finally, all that we need is the button down here at the bottom to actually collapse our sidebar. Now, as I think we're probably getting the idea here, I can probably just go ahead and drop in our toggle close button and we'll actually cover over that. So toggle close, this is gonna live down here at the very bottom of our sidebar. I'm using absolute positioning here. You can also uh, you know, use set heights if you think you're gonna have a whole bunch of these and you need to scroll. If you actually saw my last video, you would have seen that I said that that's probably a good idea. But for this example, I'm doing the simpler thing. Again, I wanna get through this layout as quickly as I can. So we're just gonna do kind of the, the easy way so that we can get to the animation piece. Uh, but yeah, for this, we're just gonna use absolute position. We're gonna put it down here at the bottom. And one thing that I'll call out one more time is that again, we are setting our size to 10 around our wrapping Chevron button here. Because again, whenever this is fully collapsed, I want to make sure that all of these things line up really, really cleanly. 
But beyond that, all of the rest of this is just very simple markup. If I take my toggle close now, come back up to the top under my closing dev, dev right here, just drop that in. And remember to actually pass in open and set open, set open. Now we should be able to see our button down here. We should click it and it should collapse everything down to a nice kind of form fitting size where again, all of these are the same size. This is kind of the 10 by 10 or 40 pixels by 40 pixels. And you can still change between each of these tabs. Nice. And with all of this done, I think we can go ahead and move on to actually the fun part, which is adding the animations. So somehow my, I'm gonna try and do this layout part really, really quick, somehow turned into 15 minutes of recording. Hopefully that ended up only being six or seven minutes on your guys' end. But now we are going to actually get to the animation piece, which for, with frame or motion actually ends up being almost as easy as the actual layout piece. So up here at the top, remembering that I've already installed frame or motion, I'm going to import motion from frame or motion and motion if you've never used it before is essentially a way to extend our basic jsx elements so for instance our nav right here this is just the element that wraps our entire navigation with motion dot and then whatever that kind of jsx element is for your basic elements and this gives us a whole bunch of different kind of superpowers and things right so we're already passing in kind of a style prop with with open and things like this but you could also have things like an animate prop right so i could have you know animate is equal to whatever and then i could set an initial state so just as a basic example i could set initial opacity to zero and then you know animate that up to an opacity of one and then whenever you would have seen that really really quickly whenever our screen refreshes over here we'll have a little opacity fade which we will get to a little bit more of that in a second but as for our actual layout animation how would we be able to take something like that and make that work with opening and closing well we could pass in kind of our 255 and our fit content uh, to an animate prop but even easier than that is a single prop called layout and essentially what layout does, if I just kind of hover over this, we can kind of read this, um, but anytime the layout of something changes, so this could even be, you know, flex elements going from flex end to flex start, or any kind of other way that an element moves about the screen, it is going to, as opposed to just, you know, changing that, so changing the width from large to small, it's going to calculate both of those, and then it's going to do an interpolation between those two uh, in kind of an animation, right? So it's going to animate from wide to small as opposed to just swapping between them. Now with just this dropped only on our nav, we are gonna see that this looks a little bit janky. I need to refresh. Try that again. Yeah, so you'll see that you get like all these kind of weird stretchings and things. Well, that's because the way that it actually does this is using transforms, as you might imagine, right? So how would you take an entire element and move it from, you know, maybe smaller to larger with a different aspect ratio, if not with some kind of transforms? Fortunately, there's a really, really easy way to fix this, and that's just by finding elements uh, that you don't want to have this kind of stretching effect and adding a layout to those as well. So we can start just with our title section. I'm gonna come back down to that guy right there. And then on my, or I guess, yeah, on my logo, we'll go into our logo first. Forgot that was a separate component. And just on my wrapping div right here, we'll turn this into a motion.div and add that layout prop here as well. And now if we just watch kind of the logo piece, we should see that that piece does not distort whenever we open and close this element. Now we probably don't want to distort kind of this text either. So coming back up to our div right here, we can say motion.div and we can give this a layout animation. And now that should no longer be actually just kind of flashing in and out or, or stretching in and out. But we may, you know, you will see that this kind of looks a little bit weird whenever we open this back up. So maybe we'll add a little bit of an animation to animate that text back in whenever we open this back up. And the way that we do that is with those initial and animate props that I was talking about just a second ago. So for my example, I want initial to be opacity of zero and a Y transform of 12. This is just a shorthand for translate or transform translate. And we'll animate that to opacity of one Y of zero. And I want this to actually wait a little bit before it actually runs this animation whenever the element mounts. So I'll add a transition as well, just with a transition prop and give it a delay of 0 0.125 seconds. And now remember just looking up here at the top, whenever this opens up, we'll see that we get this nice little animation on our text. Now really all that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and do the same kind of thing on everything else, right? So we can start with our option, wherever that is. We'll turn this button into a, oh, let's see into a motion.button and then add a layout to that as well. 
we'll turn our logo into a motion.div for the wrapper and add a layout there. For our open guy here, we'll turn that into a motion.span or for our, for our actual title here. And we can just use the same kind of props we used earlier. I want this to animate in and out as well with the same kind of animation. And then finally for our notifications, I'll have to do a slightly different animation, but we'll say motion.span. And remember what I was talking about with our style tag, how this was originally like a, a Y and then just the 50%. That's because there's kind of a shorthand in frame or motion for these style tags. Now, if I kind of drop in all of what we want here, we'll see why we needed that. So I have a Y transform here, but I'm also animating scale, which is another transform property. And with frame or motion, if you want to do any other kinds of transforms, you can't do those without just passing them directly in because frame or motion needs to know how to kind of combine all of those different transforms together. And the way that we do that is just by directly passing Y in here as opposed to, to a class. Now I'm delaying this a little bit longer and I'm doing a scale animation instead of a Y transform animation. We can actually kind of see that coming together now. So if I close this and then I open it back up, we'll see everything animates in and then our little notification after a second will animate and pop in as well. And all that leaves us with now is our actual hide button down here at the bottom, which is our last button down here, our, or our last component, our toggle close component. So as you'd probably expect, we're just going to take this button and turn it into a motion dot button, add our layout prop. For our div on the chevron here, again, just a motion.div. I guess I actually already accidentally copy pasted that layout over. That might've been a little bit of a hint earlier. And for our final span, you probably would have guessed we're gonna do the exact same animation we were doing with the others. So we're just gonna turn this into a motion.span and drop our props, the exact same animation props. Obviously you can you know turn these into a constant somewhere else if you wanted to follow the exact same pattern. But with all of this, we should now have our full animation. We shouldn't have any kind of weird distortions or anything. Everything is going to animate in and out, including the width and every single element in the tray here. And with that, we have our full animation. As mentioned at the beginning, all the source code for this is down in the description, both in JavaScript like we did here, as well as in TypeScript, along with a whole bunch of other cool animated UI components for React and Tailwind CSS and Framer Motion. If you're interested in learning more about animations or building cool websites, please check that out. Beyond that, if you got anything out of this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.